7.4, solving log equations and inequalities. This whole lesson is all about how to solve log equations. So let's get to it. Okay, before we start though, actually let's, there's a couple things we have to go over. First, let's talk about the domain of log, of log x actually. If you remember from what we did last class, our log graph looks kind of like this. It's a brief rendition. So your domain of a log equation is x is greater than or equal to zero. I mean, just greater than zero, not equal to. Um, because that's by zero. So what does this mean? Now, log, this means that log x cannot be negative, or zero actually. X could be negative, as long as you plug it back in, you actually, as long as you plug it in, you don't get a negative for log, like if you try ever try to do log, log of negative two, that makes no sense. Or log of zero, makes no sense. So if you get anything like that, then it's no solution. Your X could be negative if you have something to this effect. Right, I have a negative answer. I plug in, it makes it positive. Right, so it's all about it's all about checking your work. It's kind of like the plug it back in. Log x cannot be negative or zero. That's the first thing. The second thing is there's a rule we haven't talked about yet, and that's this: if you have a base to a log with the same base, so that looks kind of funky, right? That's like saying this: three log base three of x. What happens here is anytime the the base of the power Base of the number is to a power with the same log base, these cancel out and you just get x. So anytime you have 3 log base 3 or 5 log base 5, they're going to cancel out and you just get the bigger number, the big number, x. So that's the second rule. And why is that important? Because that's one of the main ways we solve this. Now there's actually two ways to solve these type of equations, and let's do the first way first, which is just rewrite it. Rewrite it. Find your base. So it's be nine, right? Base to the power, so three halves equals x. Now we gotta figure out what nine to three halves is. Remember we talked about this? You always want to do the root first. So it's gonna be the square root of nine cubed. Square root of nine is three. Three cubed is twenty-seven. And that's the first way to do this. That's what I used to do when I was in high school, was just rewrite it and solve. But now there's actually a little faster way I'm going to do that next. So way two is we're going to do it that second row here. We're going to try to create that. So see how nine is my base? We're going to do this. We're going to take nine to the base of both sides. So let me show what that looks like. You know what? And when you're doing your work on the show, this work, you just kind of go take nine to both sides and then stuff cancels out. So let me show what it looks like. It looks like nine. So log base nine X equals nine to three halves. What happens here is that these cancel out. And you get x equals 9 to 3 s, which we already did. And we know is 8, 27. I know it's essentially the same thing, but that's the way we're going we're gonna to be doing it. We're going to do it more mathematically. We're just going to take the 9 on both sides. And also, added bonus, it's an easier way to rewrite it. Right? So that's the idea. So let's do this one. I see the 16 right there. I'm going to take that base to both sides. So 16 to this and 16 to this. These cancel. I get x equals 6 to the 5 halves. Remember, always do the root first. So we're going to do square root of 16 to the 5th. Square root of 16 is 4. And 4 to the 5th is that I have no idea. There's some big number there. But I'm guessing 1024. I'm actually pretty positive about that right now, but we'll see. And it is. I double checked. Sometimes I get skills. So, next thing. Right, let's do a couple more to make sure we got this. And okay, let's make sure it's a little different, right? Same idea here. Okay, here's your base eight, so we're gonna take eight to both sides. So I'll take eight here, eight here. These count, so you're gonna x equals eight to the four thirds. Hopefully, you're getting a little better at this. So that's gonna be the cube root of eight to the fourth, which is two to the fourth, which is gonna be sixteen. Right? Onto this one, same thing. Oh, there's a base. Let's just take that to both sides. Get that stuff out of here x is equal to 16 to the 3 fourths. Do the 4th root of 16, which we just kind of did the backwards thing right here, right? 2 to the 4th root of 16. So the 4th root of 16, just be 2. 2 to the 3rd is 8. Right? So that's a basic way to solve a log problem. So when it's super basic, you just take the base of both sides to cancel out the logs. Now let's get a little fancier, but actually easier. So what happens if you have a log on both sides, right? The last one we just did, right? We just came away from log on one side. And I want you to understand that, oh, where it's the base, take that on both sides. 
these cancel, x equals 3 squared or 9. Right? That's what you solve when there's only one log. Well, two logs, how does this work? Well, the same idea. What's the base? 3. Take it to both sides. These cancel, and you get x squared minus 15 equals 2x. Notice again, yeah, it works, right? It only works when blocks are, <laughs> when blocks are the same base. So you're not, but that's one way that it could work. You can't do it by hand without if the logs are different bases. At least with stuff we learned so far. Anyway, I'm here. Remember the way you gotta solve this? It's a quadratic. Set equal to zero and set e and factor, right? Like we always do. Semester one's back again. So set equal to zero. All right, subtract two x from both sides, so it's a negative two x. And we're gonna factor two things. I multiply to get negative 15 by to get 5 is 5 and 3. The negative the middle is negative so 5 is a bigger number is negative. Split it and I get x equals 5 and negative 3 right. So that equal to 0, 0 property rule. Solve. Now remember thing I said earlier? x remember log cannot be negative. Now if I plug these in let's look at this one because that's a little easy. If I plug in 5, I get log 10. That's fine. This checks out. If I plug in negative 3, I'm going to get log 3 to negative 6. Can't have that. So that's not an answer. My answer is only x equals 5. Right? Remember, log can it. My answer could actually be negative, but log, when I plug in it, it can't be negative or 0. So another one, real quick. See my here? Let's take 12 to both sides. These cancel, x squared minus 7 equals x plus 5, set equal to 0, minus 5, minus 5, right, Let's factor it, x minus 4 and 3, I can do math, split it, x equals 4 and negative 3, negative 3, right, now let's check these. Plug in 4. If I plug in 4 here, I get 4 plus 5 is 9. That works. Plug in 4 there, 60 minus 7 works. Let's check negative 3. Negative 3 plus 2 is actually log 2. That's fine, right? Again, even if it's a negative, when I plug it in, it works. Plug in negative 3 here. Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 7 is 2. Again, that works out. In this case, they both work. Right? So it can't just it's not just when it's negative. Make sure when you plug it in, the log is not negative. In this case, they're both positive. It works. Both my answers are good. Next step, let's talk about log inequalities. Log inequalities, the way we do these, is very similar to in the square root when we did the square root inequalities. Right? We, did, we have to worry about the domain. That's the thing I meant to say. So step zero, I always like to say, is find a domain. So when we do, when we do log inequalities, there's a domain that we have to worry about. So we have to find a domain first. Now, domain for logs is just the thing inside the log has to be greater than zero. <clears throat> right? Not greater than equal to zero, just greater than zero. That's my domain. So let's do a couple. This first one here, let's find my do domain first. My domain, let's just get this. That has to be greater than zero. And that's it. That was quick and easy. Now let's solve this. Right? So we're going to take the base of both sides. Now notice there's only one log, so. The way we saw the log is always the same way. Take the base of both sides. These cancel. X is greater than or equal to 4 to the third. So X is greater than or equal to 64. Now as always, you kind of want to see if what the, what the answer is. So you have to be greater than 0. And greater than or equal to 64. And it's the overlap. So it's just actually this. As always, when it's greater than, most of the time it's just going to be the answer. When it's less than, most of the time it's going to be the in intersection. Not always, because it depends. It could get a little funky right here, but the general rule is if it's a basic one, greater than doesn't take care of the domain, you have to worry about it. When it's less than, you have to worry about it. The general rule. But again, sometimes it's going to be a little bit different. So, let's do this one. All right, same thing as finding my domain. Hey, it's another easy one. Done. Now let's solve it. Take the base of both sides. These cancel. X is less than 2 to the 4th, which is 16. So I got X is less than 16, X is greater than 0. So that would be somewhere in between those two. Oof. No, not equal. Not equal. So you're going to be somewhere between 0 and 16. Again, if I graph it, here's 16 going that way. 
it's an open circle. Here's zero, you're going this way. And you'll be somewhere in between those two. That's the general rule of how to solve inequalities. Sitting is like solving logs. So I'm actually gonna we'll do we'll do one of these. Let's do this one. Ah, let's do both, I guess. Let's write find my domain first. X is greater than zero. So easy. Uh, let's actually solve it. Here's your base. Take five to both sides. So x is greater than five to the third. So x is greater than one twenty five. So x is greater than zero and one twenty five. It's only me this one because that one's greater than both of them. That's your answer. Here, find my domain. Done and easy. Solve it. X is less than or equal to eight to the negative two. Remember, that just flips it. That's all negative power does is flip it. So it's 1 over 8 squared. So x is less than or equal to 1 over 16. And if you're not sure you could graph it, here's 0. Open circle. Here's 1 16th, really close to 0. This is a closed circle this time. And you're going that way. So it's overlap. You're in between those two answers. Let's do the same thing with uh, log of most size. This is probably the final one we do. We're going now. The temptation is to take three to both sides, right? But again, we got to worry about the domain. In this case, we actually have two things. So we're worried about the domain on both of them. So the domain on that top one there, or the left one, I should say, seven x minus six is greater than zero. Right, a lot fancier than the domain we had earlier, which was just like zeros. This actually has something inside of it. So my domain here, just add six divided by seven. It's greater than six sevenths. My domain for this guy, four x plus nine is greater than zero. So solve subtract nine divided by four is this. And now we actually gotta solve it. Let's take the three to both sides, right? Whatever the base is, take that to both sides. These will cancel. Seven x minus six is less than four x plus nine. Do a little math, minus 4x, minus 4x, plus 6, plus 6. I get 3x is less than 15. Divide by 3, x is less than 5. So I have all this stuff here. I have these two domains. I have this. We gotta. If you want to figure out what the answer is, the easiest thing to do is probably just graph it all, see where we land. So negative 9 fourths is over here. Open circle that way. 6 sevenths and 5. 6 sevenths is less than 5, so 6 sevenths will come next. Same idea, it's going that way. And then 5 going the opposite way. Remember, so the way this works is where does where's everything overlapping? That's right here, from here to here. So my answer is going to be in between 6 sevenths and 5 is the only place I can actually have an answer. So x is going to be between 5 and 6 sevenths. And that's the idea.